How could Dr. Cornell West be a spoiler to a system he's not a part of? For a party he's not a part of. For a type of politics and ideology he does not share or participate in. How can he be spoiling you? Doesn't make sense. McDonald's doesn't spoil Burger King. CBS doesn't spoil ABC. Kung Fu doesn't spoil karate. But when it comes to elections, if you're running for an office and you're not a Democrat, then you're spoiling it for the Democrats. Dr. Cornell West went on Meet the Press, and the conversation went down here almost immediately because all the focus was on Poe Biden and why isn't Cornell West running as a Democrat? Your longtime political ally, Senator Bernie Sanders, he's not a Democrat, but he did, as you know, run twice in the Democratic presidential primary. So let me just put the question to you. Why have you decided to run as a third party candidate rather than a Democrat challenging President Biden? Yes, I mean, Bernie Sanders, as you know, is my very dear brother. I have a deep love for him. We have disagreement at this historical moment. I'm thoroughly convinced that uh, neither party is speaking to the pressing needs of poor and working people. And so the two-party system itself is becoming an impediment for the flowering of American democracy. We've got too many fellow citizens, 63% living paycheck to paycheck. And many of us know exactly what that means, no matter how big or small our check actually is. And so in that sense, I must say that it's hard to view oneself as a spoiler when there's increasing rot in the system with two parties connected to big money, Wall Street, Silicon Valley, and militarism abroad. And we need, and, and, and really the anthem of, of black people, lift every voice. We need many, many more voices, and the two parties that we have are too narrow at this point. Uh, how can you spoil something that's already rotten? It's turning green and it stinks. And you're going, hey, won't you just eat it anyway? Because I don't want to get sick. And that's what a lot of the candidates end up being, sick. Well, I'm curious because you say this is a moment where you're not necessarily seeing eye to eye with your good friend, Senator Bernie Sanders. Have you spoken to him about your candidacy? As you know, he's already endorsed President Biden. No, no, we've had no dialogue. I can feel his love at a distance. I hope he can feel my love at a distance. But no, we've had no dialogues about it, not at all. And as you know, I was very close to him for two, two uh, 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 campaigns. And I just don't think the Democratic Party treated him fairly. They didn't treat him justly. The Democratic Party was too anti-democratic. And I think both establishments in the Republican Party and in the Democratic Party they are undergoing a slow erosion. I think one of the reasons why you get a Trump is because the Democratic Party establishment has mm -hmm. eroded. I think you're going to see it in many ways in the uh, debate tomorrow night. You know, we just don't have the high quality. So you end up with a lot of Pied Piper language of Trump, but he's in so many ways beneath mediocrity, God bless him. And then with Biden... You've got Miltos mediocrity. Where are the great visionary statespersons to come in and intervene as this country is undergoing polarization and gangsterization? In the name of integrity, honesty, decency, and generosity, we have got to have new voices on the scene. That's why I'm running for president. Put down the crack pipe, lady. Dr. Cornel West worked with Bernie Sanders on his campaign, and he saw up close and personal what happens when you go against the Democratic Party, what happens if you run as a Democrat, how that deals with you, how it affects you, how they bamboozle you, how they scapegoat you, how they throw you under the bus, how they get Obama to step in and just further line you up against the wall and egg you to death with people that do all types of dastardly schemes in order to strategize to get you out of the race. It's horrific what happens. So now Dr. Corner West knows this. You know it. We all know it. Doesn't it suck that you got to be a part of a system where you have to pretend not to know stuff that you know? That's what the commentators have to do. Commentators got to pretend not to know anything in order to keep their jobs and keep the money train going. Look, I'm not going to beat up on this person, but I will say, put down the crack pipe. Well, Bernie ran as a Democrat. That's what I'm saying. You shouldn't have. 
Let me ask you about your past position. In 2004, you signed a letter of former Ralph Nader advisors urging progressives in swing states to vote for John Kerry. I'm going to read you a little bit of this letter that you signed. Quote, this year, we urge support for Kerry Edwards in all swing states, even while we strongly disagree with Kerry's policies on Iraq and other issues. For people seeking progressive social change in the United States, removing George W. Bush from office should be the top priority in the 2004 presidential election. Progressive voters for John Kerry in swing states may prove decisive in attaining this vital goal. If you believed that in 2004, Dr. West, how do you rationalize your third party candidacy this time around? Well, it's a wonderful question, because, as you know, I supported Brother Biden, given my profound disagreement with Biden as architect of mass incarceration, as supporter of invasion and occupation of Iraq. Why? Because I was thoroughly convinced that what the Republicans were presenting was so dangerous. But the sad thing is now, is that as dangerous as a second Trump term would be, if we don't break out of the corporate duopoly, we're going to be doing this for the next 10, 20, and 30 years, and I don't think the American project can withstand it. This shift from Democrats to Republicans, Democrats feeding the Republicans, Republicans feeding the Democrats, and yet poor people, working people, finding themselves pushed to the margins. It could be... Cop City, both parties support. It could be expansion of military budget, both parties support. It could be policies advantageous to Wall Street, both parties support. And as you know, this is the 60th anniversary of Brother Martin Luther King's great speech. And, and I've always viewed myself as my own humble calling, trying to keep alive the great legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., Fannie Lou Hamer, Ella Baker, and Diane Nash. And that tradition has to continue on and on. I think of Les McCann's great classic. Compared to what, 1969? Compared to what at this point with these parties? Let's try something new. Dr. West is on fire. Dr. West is on fire. Blazing. Somebody get the fire extinguisher. Put him out. That sister sitting there like, please, don't make me lose my job on my first day. Come here talking all this stuff. You know you are dazzling. You are amazing me with this rhetoric, Dr. Cornell West. You put me in a bad position. You know I agree with you, Cornell. I just got to keep this job. I got kids. I got a family. I got things to do. Come on, leave me alone. Stop talking. You make too much sense for them, Dr. West. Too much sense. Too much sense to the average worker. They're afraid of you, Dr. West. They are afraid of you. Y'all, we need to protect this brother. Protect Dr. West at all costs. He's speaking truth here. He helped you out with Biden one time. That's all he, that's, that's more than he should have done. They want me to help him again? Again? Nah. It was for him to help the people. That's what Joe should have did. Dr. <laughs> Joe Biden should have went in there and did what he needed to do in order to secure votes by helping the people and putting policies together that were bold, bold. He don't got no bold policies, bold policies that make this fear of a Dr. Cornell West candidacy a non-issue. The fact he didn't do it is on him and the rest of the Democratic Party. Let's keep going. This is getting good. West, as you know, though, if you look back throughout history, third party candidates have at times made the difference in presidential elections, including in 2016, when in some key states, Jill Stein, for example, seemed to make a difference. Would you be OK if at the end of the day the vote totals came back, you stayed through the entire race and it was clear that your candidacy helped deliver former President Trump? another term in office. Well, the vast number of voters who would vote for a Green Party and myself either would not vote at all or would never, ever, ever vote for Biden or Trump. And that's very important to keep in mind because there's this narrative, I think it's a false narrative, thinking that somehow they're choosing between Biden and myself. No, not really. They've given up on Biden. What is it now? 48% of our precious fellow citizens do not vote at all, my dear sister. That's not a good sign in a democracy that's already in decay. That's not a good symptom of a democracy already 
experiencing a kind of decadence. We've got to bring new people in, and neither party is really interested in speaking to that 48% that has given up on American democracy. It's unfair how well Dr. Cornel West is doing on this interview. Look, listen, lady. A lot of people don't vote for Joe. A lot of people don't vote at all. That's not a good sign. It's a stop sign is what it is. Stop running, milk toast, neoliberals. Stop running, neo-fascist asses like Trump. Stop. You're saying because a Green Party person ran, that means they got someone elected on another side that, that they had nothing to do with? That's what you're saying? You know, what well, that, that reminds me. I remember one time I had a pack of Trident sugarless gum. I put it in my pocket. You know, later on that day, it rained. It, it rained. And I'm telling you, man, whenever it gets dry outside, I'm like, damn, we need some rain. All I got to do is go get some Trident and put it in my pocket. Because we all know that's what makes rain happen. Why can't you just work for the people and do what the people want you to do? And then you're like, you don't have a problem with who's running this third party because people are going, no, nah, I'm great with the Democrats. Democrats have great policies that have really been helpful. They changed the poverty rate. They lowered the, uh, the, the economic obstacles that were in our way. I benefited so much from being a Democrat. It's been so amazing. We have our schools funded, finally. They stopped depending on the state money, income taxes. They put together a package for black American descendants of slaves so they could get an opportunity to build wealth like their white counterparts. Oh, man, the Democrats are amazing. But see, none of that ever happens. And see, we get people like this, and she's a really a nice person. I'm sure she's a very nice person. But the, the system, we get people in the system telling us it's our fault if we went out of the system. We went out of the two-party system. Somehow, that makes us the bad guys, not the people in the system who perpetuate the system. Make it make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't. What do you say to your fellow progressives, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Senator John Fetterman? Get off the crack pipe. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Keep going. Keep going. I'm having too much fun now. Who've expressed their real concerns about a third party candidacy. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says, quote, it's very difficult to square the very real threat of a Republican presidency with the risk of giving up the very small margin of electoral votes needed to ensure that President Biden wins. John Fetterman says, I fundamentally believe that you don't mess around with the kinds of highest stakes we're dealing with. Can you just imagine what a second term of Trump would be? It's all going to be about revenge. What do you say to your fellow progressives who are expressing deep concerns about a third party candidacy? Well, I think one thing to keep in mind is that one out of eight of the voters for Trump voted for Bernie Sanders. See, that that Trump's followers are not homogeneous and monolithic. If you can speak to their pain, if you can speak to their frustration, they will never vote for Democrats but many of them would be open to those who are speaking to their needs. They don't have to follow the Pied Piper, the old fascist Pied Piper with with Trump. A new vision, a different alternative can convince a significant number of them. And so again, I'm resisting the notion that somehow it's just a matter of myself and, and, and Brother Biden that people are choosing between. No, no, we've got large numbers of non-voters who are interested, especially young people. Look at the percentage of young people. Only 20-some percent participate at all. I want to speak to those young that- folk. I want to try to galvanize their energy. I'm thoroughly convinced that a lot of these people that work in media, they don't have regular lives. They don't go around regular people. They don't know regular folks who can't stand politics and be like, ah, they're not Democrats or Republicans. Most people don't participate in either party. And as far as Green Party members, Dr. Cornel West is right. Have you ever been around Green Party people? Have you ever been around Green Party people? Do you realize these people would never, ever vote for Hillary or Joe Biden? They would, their bodies would attack itself, start eating itself alive. They would burst into flames. They they grow, grow a third arm, and their heads would spin around like the Exorcist if they voted for Hillary or a Joe Biden. Do you realize the pain they'd have to go through 
to go up there and put in neoliberal. You know, I don't care what Bill Maher says. I really don't give a damn. These people are not going to, they're not, they're not interested. Stop saying that Cornel West is still in votes from Biden. No, Biden is still in votes from people that should be voting for Cornel West who only voted for Joe Biden because they're scared. Because you spent billions of dollars, DNC, scaring black people into thinking you was going to do something you have no intentions of ever doing, ever. You scared them with Jim Crow. You scared them with slavery. You scared them with mass incarceration. You scared them with the KKK and the terrorism. Years and years and years of terrorizing black people. The fear that's in them about their futures and about what can happen again. Do you realize that from Reconstruction to 1950, there was a black person lynched every two days? Killed by racist because they were black. Not because they didn't like what movies they watched. Not because they had on the wrong shirt or the wrong hat. But because they were black and living their lives. So no. All right, all right I'm getting I'm getting amp. Let's let's finish out this video. Dr. West, I'm getting a hard rap, so just yes or no. Are you in this until the very end, or is there a chance you'll reconsider at some point and potentially drop out? Well, I am a jazz man, you know that, but I intend to be in it to the very end because it's not just about, it's, it's not about this particular election only. It's about a larger movement. We've got to break the two-party system, and to do it is now, and if we don't do it now, we'll find ourselves back and forth, back and forth, with this swing between the fascists on the one hand and the neoliberals on the other. She just asked Dr. West, is he going to quit? Yeah, I've done all this just to quit. He didn't even start yet. You know, the kickoff is Saturday. That's when the campaign officially starts. He's just doing pre-campaign right now. And you're like, you're going to quit, right? Folks, what you just witnessed by Dr. Cornell West is one of the best performances I've seen a candidate make when it comes to rebutting issues about their candidacy. This was a clinic. This was Kobe Bryant at his best, MJ at their best performance level. People right now are getting goosebumps. The reality is, is that Dr. Cornell West stands for something. It's a movement. Joe Biden was in a movement. Joe Biden was self-serving, and he had one utility, give it a Trump, so people would think things weren't as bad as they are. But now they're realizing they're just as bad. A recent poll showed 49% of black people didn't see any change since Biden came in. And white people feel the same way. 45% of them feel the same way. So there we go. That's America talking. It ain't me talking. It ain't Dr. West talking. It's not Jill Stein talking. It ain't Nina Turner talking. That is nothing but American people voting. Those people talking. 75% of, of, of Americans don't want Biden to run. That's worse than Trump. With four indictments, that's still worse than Trump. And you're going to blame Dr. West if Biden loses? Ah! Blame the fact that you have a horrible vice president and a horrible president at the same time. If you support Dr. Cornell West and you want to track his race to the presidency, subscribe to this channel and do it now. Not later. You'll forget later. Do it now. And become a member of the Tim Black Show. It's people over politics, people over party. Hashtag, it's a new day. That's what we say around here. It's a new day. Don't you let nobody take your cornbread, especially not the DNC. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show. Independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. 
Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.